If you've been watching my channel for a while, you might know that to do all of my torrenting, I use Transmission. And along with this, I've been using interfaces like Transmission Remote CLI and Trenk. But the problem with these interfaces is they come with a lot of extra information that I just really don't care about. Really all I care about from a transmission interface is being able to add torrents, remove torrents, list out the torrents I have, and that's pretty much all I care about. So today, we're going to be looking at a bit of a different interface, and this one is called Torque. And this is about as minimal as you can get, any more minimal than this, and you might as well just get rid of the interface altogether, and maybe just use, I don't know, notifications or something like that. And if you care about lines of code, this is just a 50 line bash script. So hopefully that's gonna be small enough for you. Throughout this video, I'm going to be making comparisons with Tremp, just so you can see what the differences between the two of them actually are. So over on my main screen, what we have here, this is torque. So across the bottom, all we have is just a bar of the hotkeys. And then because I don't actually have any torrents loaded into this, the rest of the screen is just completely blank. And if we go over to Tremp now, as you're going to see, there's a little bit more information actually going on. So across the top here, we have our transmission version number. We have the port and the IP address this is running on. And then we have some information across the top and some information across the bottom as well. So as you can see, even though there's no torrents in here, there's still a little bit more going on. But let's actually go and add a torrent just so we can see what the difference is actually going to be. So if you actually have magnet links set up inside of transmission, you should be able to just go click on a link and then have that automatically get loaded up inside of transmission, or you can go and download the torrent file and then load that up inside of transmission like that. But let's say you don't have either of those set up and you still want a way to actually load a torrent into this. Well, what you can do is actually go and copy the location of the magnet link and then go over to talk and press O. And what O is gonna do is request a magnet link. So let's actually go and paste this in here and just press enter. And as you can see, it's actually gone and loaded that into transmission. So it's gonna go through a couple of stages. First it verified, then it goes into idle. So on the left here, what it's telling you is the current state the torrent is actually in. Then next to that, we have the amount you've downloaded the size of the actual torrent itself, the percentage, the download rate, and the upload rate. Now, I was downloading this off camera just a bit, so it actually has downloaded quite a bit already. And if we go over to the other one, as you'll see, there is way more information here. So we still have the download rate, upload rate, and things like that, but we also have things like the seeds, the leeches, the peers. And if we go and open up this torrent, this is where we start seeing a lot of information that I just really don't use most of the time. So as you can see, we have the hash, we have a bunch of other information in here as well, and then a bunch of tabs as well. So we have files, peers, trackers, chunks, and a lot of this stuff I really don't care about. Now, sometimes some of it actually is useful. So for example, it would be nice to see files over in talk. You can't actually do that though. And it also would be nice to see the number of seeds and leeches. But besides that, most of this information I never actually look at. For example, I don't really care who my peers are. I don't really care about the trackers. I don't really care about the chunks. Most of what's in the overview, I don't really care about either. So it is nice to have an interface that does strip out most of this. So if we go back over to talk, let's actually try some other stuff. So if I just go and press P on this, what that's gonna do is request us for an ID to pause. So if I just put in ID three, because that's the ID of this torrent right here, and I press enter on that, as you can see, that's now gone into the stop state. And if I wanna go and then restart that, all I have to do is press S and then say which one I wanna restart. So in this case, I'm gonna start up three. So start that again, and now it's gone into idle. And then in a bit, it's going to go into the seeding state. And as you can see, it's entered that mode. Okay, so let's say that you've seeded a bunch and now you wanna actually get rid of the torrent. Well, what you can do here is just press R and then give it an ID again. So in this case, we're just going to give it the ID three and then we're going to remove that. And there we go. One thing you may have noticed about this interface that could be a bit of a problem is that it doesn't actually show you how much you've seeded. So normally when I go and download something like this, I'll try to seed at least as much as I've downloaded. Normally I'll try to seed at least double or maybe even more than that. And the problem with this interface is you have literally no idea how much you've actually seeded. So over in something like Tremp, as we can see, we have uploaded 64K. Over here, there is 
absolutely no indication that you've actually seeded anything. Now, for me, this isn't really that big of a deal because in Australia, data caps kind of don't exist on home connections. But if you are in a place where data caps can be a serious problem, then using this interface could be a pretty big problem for you. I didn't actually explain why the problems I brought up earlier actually are a problem. So not being able to see these cedars and leeches is a problem because you have no idea if you're even going to be able to actually download the file. So for example, let's say that there is zero cedars and a thousand leeches. Well, that file is never going to be downloaded because you have no cedars, you have no one trying to put the data onto the network. So no one's going to actually be able to download anything from that. And not being able to see that, all you're going to see on your interface is, oh, the torrent is not downloading for some reason. I have no idea why that's actually happening. But over here, for example, you'd actually be able to see, okay, well, we have X number of seeds and we have X number of leeches. Now, on the Arch Linux ISO, it doesn't actually show that for some reason. I, I don't actually understand how BitTorrent works. So I presume there is some reason why that's not being shown. But most torrents you're going to have will tell you the number of seeds and the number of leeches. So the other thing that I mentioned is not being able to see the files is a problem. Now the reason why not being able to see the files is a problem is the same reason why you wouldn't want to just download some random file you see somewhere on the internet. If you don't know what file you're downloading, it could actually be something nefarious. Now obviously you can hide what a file is called by just changing the name of it, but if you're trying to download something like I don't know, a Linux ISO and it's 500 kilobytes. You should be able to say, okay, I can't imagine how a Linux ISO could be 500 kilobytes. That's obviously something that I'm not trying to download. So being able to see the list of files at least gives you that, I guess, rudimentary understanding of what you're actually downloading. There were two more things you can do with talks that I didn't actually mention. Now, I only have one torrent in here, so I can't actually scroll, but you can scroll with J and K, which is nice to see. And if you want to go and quit the interface, all you have to do is press Q. Cool. So let's actually go and get this installed. Okay, going over to the GitHub page, as we're going to see, talk is written by Dylan A. Raps, who you should probably recognize by now. So he's written some little applications that maybe you've never heard of, like NeoFetch, PyWall, PFetch, and FFF. Now, even if you didn't recognize the name, you've probably used at least one of those applications, probably something like NeoFetch or PyWall. So if we want to go and install this application, it's really easy. The dependencies are bash, because it's a bash script and you have bash installed in your system. Most Linux systems will have bash installed and you also need transmission CLI for obvious reasons because this is a transmission client. And if you actually want to go and run the application, all you have to do is start up your transmission daemon and then run talk. That's all you have to do. No other configuration required. It's a very, very simple application. So as I said, it's just a bash script. So pretty much all you have to do is go and download the repo and then just put the script wherever it is that you actually run your script. So for me, I've just dumped it into my script directory. So as we're gonna see, if we go into here and then go down to talk. As you can see, that's all I've done. I've just dropped it into my scripts directory and now I can just run it. You might wanna put it in somewhere like your slash user slash bin or some other place like that. But for me, I've just dumped it into my scripts folder. Going forward, even though it does have some problems like the lack of the file list and the lack of cedars and leeches, I'm still probably going to just start using this because I don't use most of the features of Tremp and I didn't use most of the features of Transmission Remote CLI either. So I might as well just use this. If I need to see things like cedars and leeches, I guess I can stick them into like a dunce notification or something like that. But generally, I don't really need to see that. Most of the stuff I'm trying to download has a lot of people seeding it, so it's not really that big of a deal for me. It would be nice to see though. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video, but before I go, I want to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Peter D. Road, Tony Donald, John Spagin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to support the channel, there'll be some links down below. And if you want to go watch my podcast, that is Techvity available on Library, YouTube, and some other platforms as well. And the audio version is available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, we go check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, BitChute, and some other platforms as well. 
And remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. I've also started blogging on platforms like Minds and Read.Cash. So be sure to go check those out because I've been having a lot of fun with that. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.